And so sadness and anger that accompany um, secondary trauma, they're going to display responses that are not that are not equivalent to the triggers themselves. So some other examples of our signs of secondary trauma, it's just pessimism. Like everything is negative. There's no hope in any of the situations or any of the families and kiddos that you work with. So now we know a couple of the signs. Now let's move on to how do I actually defeat this? How can I deal with this hands on? So inside of the packet that you guys receive, normally if I was in person, we would do an inventory. And the reason why we do an inventory is to kind of give you an idea of what area. I'm looking at the slides. Can you guys see those slides yet? Okay, we'll just continue. No. Nope. We're working yeah, on this. I'm so sorry, guys. Can you see them now? They should all be familiar with my technological difficulties by now. Okay, well, we will carry on. So inside the package, there's an inventory. And the inventory basically covers different areas of your life. So there's a work area, there's a social area, there's a spiritual area. And so when you guys get some time, I'll, it would be very helpful for you guys to actually take time and fill out that inventory. Because this is going to give you an idea of what areas of your life you really need to apply self-care. And so now we're going to dive into the hands-on stuff. Okay, so the first exercise that, we're going, that we are going to work on today is deep breathing. So one of the easiest ways that I explore deep breathing with clients as well as their parents, the easiest way to get them to understand a really good deep breath is simply with bubbles. And so the whole point of breathing, you're probably thinking, we're on this call and we're talking about deep breathing. Yes, we're on this call and we're talking about deep breathing. So breathing, what it does is, it gives you time to actually just calm down and think of other solutions, but it also fires off messages in your brain to just simply relax. Okay? So I'm going to give you a minute, and we don't have any bubbles. I, I would love to have sent you guys bubbles ahead of time so we can do this together. But another way that you can do this is simply smell the flowers and blow out birthday candles. So I'm going to encourage you, take a deep breath in, smell the flowers, and I slowly blow out those candles. Smell the flowers, and slowly blow out those candles. So once again, those that breathing, it triggers those neurons in the brain and it tells your body, calm down and relax. And a lot of these skills that we're exploring today, they can be used with those kiddos that are having meltdowns when you get those phone calls. I can't get this kid to calm down. These are some of the skills that you actually can use at a moment to help that family out. So we're going to move forward. And the next one on the list is grounding. So grounding is a really, really great tool because it helps, you know, you focus back on the here and now. It brings you back to the moment. It's basically an opportunity for you or as well as the family or that kid to get their mind off of what set them off in the first place emotionally. So when I think of grounding, I honestly think of the end of the day, I don't know about you, but normally my day floods me at once. Everything that happened that day, it just hits me. So if you've heard a number of different stories and they all have been trauma field activities or situations that have happened in life and everything hits you at once, can you imagine how overwhelmed you're going to feel? So grounding is going to get you back to a calm place. So the easiest way for me to teach you grounding, and of course I sent you guys a couple of additional ways to ground, but I like to call it five, four, three, two, one. And this particular grounding exercise, it focuses on your five senses. So I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to walk you through it. And the first step is five. So you want to plant your feet. You want to take a deep breath in. Once again, we're smelling flowers. We're blowing out candles. And I want you to think of five things that you can see. 
And you want to go for things that you can't just spot just, you know, off the top. You really want to pay attention to detail. So I'm going to give you a moment. Find five things that you can see in your environment currently. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Okay, so the next one is four. Four things that you can feel or touch in the environment that you are currently in. Three. I want you to think of three things that you can smell. And I think I reversed it. I think it's supposed to be three things that you can hear. I'm sorry, guys. Three things that you can hear. On this call, I can hear the sounds, and it's sounding like there's ocean near. Okay, two, two things that you can smell. And then one, one thing that you can taste. I would hope that you wouldn't have multiple tastes in your mouth. But I did have one group, and one guy said he did. He said he had a, a taste of a Subway sandwich on one side and a cookie on the other. I just told him to pick one. So at this moment, whatever you were thinking about, you probably have forgotten now. And that is the whole purpose of the grounding, is to bring you back to right now, the here and the now. And remember, it's going to divert your attention. So the next one is meditation or relaxation. So there are a variety of ways that you can actually, you know, meditate or relax. And today I'm going to share a guided meditation with you. Now, I will tell you this. I would not advise you to meditate while you're driving. So keep that on record that I told you that. This is going to be something that you are going to want to do maybe in your office on a lunch break or on a break. Or maybe this is something that you can do at home. But you want to also tell parents, please do not meditate while you're driving. So I'm going to set up and I'm going to guide you during this meditation. And so this is going to be really important, guys. I don't know if you're sitting next to someone, but you're going to have to really trust your buddy next to you because you're going to have to close your eyes. Not if you're driving. That's liability. Sorry, guys. So I want you to take a deep breath in, and we should be really good at deep breathing by now. Find yourself a quiet place to relax. Let your hands rest loosely in your lap or by your side. Now close your eyes. Take a long, slow, deep breath in through your nails, all the way down into your stomach. Hold the breath for just a moment, and then exhale through your mouth. Allow your breath to carry away all the stress and tension as the air floods out of your lungs. 
take another slow, deep breath in through your nose. Fill your lungs completely. Hold it for a moment and release the breath through your mouth. Empty your lungs completely with your out breath. Feel that tension in your body as it begins to loosen and subside. Take another deep breath in. Hold it for a moment and let it go. Feeling yourself relaxing more and more deeply with each breath. Bring your awareness to your feet and toes. Now breathe in deeply through your nose, and as you do, gradually curl your toes down. Tense the muscles in the soles of your feet. Hold your breath for just a few seconds, and then release the muscles in your feet. Now breathe out. Bring your awareness to the calf muscles. Breathe in deeply. And as you do, point your toes up towards your knees and tighten these muscles. Hold it for just a moment. And then let those muscles go limp as you exhale. Now take a deep breath in and tense the muscles in your thighs. Hold it for just a moment. Then release all those muscles. Draw in a nice deep breath and tighten the muscles in your stomach. Hold it for just a moment. Now release your breath and let your muscles relax. Now bring your awareness to the muscles in your back. As you slowly breathe in, arch your back slightly and tighten these muscles. Now breathe and let the muscles relax. Pull your shoulders towards your ears and Squeeze these muscles as you breathe in deeply. Now breathe out completely and let your contracted muscles go loose and limp. Feel the heaviness in your body now and enjoy the feeling. Breathe in again, clench your fists, and tighten all the muscles in your arms. Squeeze the muscles as you hold your breath. Now release and gently breathe away all of the tension and stress that you're carrying with you while you let your arms go loose and lift. Now tighten the muscles in your face by squeezing your eyes shut and clenching your lips together. Breathe in fully and hold this for a moment. Now breathe out and relax all your facial muscles. Take one final deep breath in 
filling your lungs completely. Hold it for a moment, then release and relax. Imagine yourself on the ocean front, about 74 degrees. Take another deep breath in for me. Feel the sand between your toes. And release that breath for me slowly as the tide comes in. Take another deep breath for me. And slowly release. The Coast Guards are coming, so we must leave the beach. You may open your eyes. If you are next to someone and they're sleeping, give them a nudge, because this tends to happen. <clears throat> so I kind of did one of the steps a little backwards, one of the skills. So inside of your packet, you are going to have some visual examples of different stretches that you can do sitting down in your car, as well as, you know, sitting at your desk, our families if they're at home. And the whole idea of, of stretching is simply movement. And you're probably thinking, what is the purpose of movement? Well, movement is a great method of self-care because it actually allows the chemicals in your brain to swim. And when I say the chemicals, I mean the happy chemicals, the good chemicals, the dopamine, the endorphins. Those are some of the ones that you want to swim. And so the more and more you move, the more they swim inside of your brain. And studies have shown that it changes your mood. So if you, under, if you notice during the meditation, there are a lot of times that you are stretching and moving those body muscles. And it is a number of different skills mixed together with that meditation that helps your body to relax and calm down. They all kind of work together. So the last step is combating negative thoughts. And so the deal is we can't control the negative thoughts that pop inside of our head, but we can definitely flip them. So I'm going to give you an example of a negative thought that I think is pretty common that if we're being honest, someone has had on this call. And so the negative thought is I'm never going to be able to help this kid. This kid is from forever, move placements, and I'm just never going to be able to help them. That's a negative thought. And the deal is our thoughts are connected to our feelings, and our feelings are connected to our behavior or our actions. And they all kind of go hand in hand. So if I walk into a situation and I say, I'm never going to be able to help this kid, what do you think I'm feeling at this point? What do you think I'm going to feel throughout the day? Hopeless? Overwhelmed? I'm probably going to be irritable. What do you think I'm going to act like? I'm not going to put any effort into this family nor this kid because I've already made up in my mind that I'm not going to be able to help this kid. So if that negative thought pops inside your head, what is the way that we actually can flip this? You know what? I may not have the skills at this moment, but I have a coworker that probably can help me. Or maybe Maya can give me some ideas of how I can help this kid and help this kid stay in this placement and be successful. Positive flip. So I want to encourage you today, any negative thoughts that you have, that pop inside your head, I want you to flip them immediately. Immediately think of a positive way to flip that thought. So remember, all of the skills that we worked on today are all skills that can be used for not just ourselves, but for our families and the kiddos that we work with. Any questions, concerns, comments? Okay, guys, um, the last thing I want to share with you, by all means, if these skills are not working for you, it is completely normal for you to reach out and get additional help. So the state workers that I have on the call, 
we have a great state EAP program. And it's the Employee Appreciation Program. And the number is 947-7576, area code 405. And the ones that are not state you know, workers, a lot of our community health hospitals and facilities, they have little to no income services that can actually help you cope through some of the things that you have experienced indirectly from the families and kiddos that we work with. And so by all means, take advantage of that if these skills are not helping. Thank you for allowing me to talk with you guys today. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Brittany. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to put our agenda back up. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I've still got the sinus stuff draining down my throat. I can't talk very well. <clears throat> So I wanted to, um, again, ask if you have any questions for Brittany and how this can be applied to the families that you're working with. Has anybody on the call used um, any of these techniques with foster parents or kiddos? I'd love to hear a story. This is Sherilyn. I had a uh, foster mom who then became the adoptive mom, and she would get almost more hyper than the child sometimes. So we worked with her on um, breathing things and just things to slow herself down, which that then helped the child. Absolutely. A lot of times as adults, how we respond to kiddos, is usually what's going to, you know, trigger the behavior of what we see. So we're overly doing it and we're, you know, really energized like this mom tends to be. I'm sure that kid's behavior is probably escalated due to what this kiddo witnessed with the guardian. Thanks, Sherilyn, for sharing that. Do we have any other examples? I know they seem really basic. Oh. Did I hear a voice? Oh, yeah, it was Julie. I was just going to say, yes, I mean, I've definitely used the, um, you know, the smell. And we always say, like, smell the flowers and blow off the candles. We do, I use that a lot with a lot of my I use it with my own kids at home. Right. So, um, yeah, and then I'd never done this five, four, three, two, one, but we have done where we try, you know, kind of um, mindfulness and I guess grounding where you, we do use all the senses. But I liked how you did that with the five, four, three, two, one. So that's that's new to put in my toolbox. I appreciate that. Thank you. Another one for your kiddos that they'll probably like is. Um, so when cookies come out the oven or while they're cooking, they smell amazing. I was at Subway last night, and they, they just they drew me in. So you smell the cookies cooking, and when you hand the cookie to your kiddo, nine chances out of ten, they're still a little warm, and so you want them to cool it off. So you tell the kiddo, smell the cookie, and then cool it off. And it's just another way to actually get them to breathe in and breathe out. They may want a cookie afterwards, but... Don't get the idea crystal clear. I always want a cookie. Me too. I don't even have to smell them. I think I'm addicted to cookies. Does anyone else have any other examples? Or do you want me to give any other ideas of how to actually apply any of the skills that we talked about today? Well, let me ask you this. What are some ways that you guys actually self-care? Like, what do you do after you've had a long day and you really just need to get back to a really good space? Because the deal is most of us have families and different, you know, people that we have to return to, and we really want to return to them in really good places. So what are some of the things that you do to keep yourself calm?
You know what? I'll be transparent. I have a voice. This is Carolyn. Um, when I come home from a long day at work and just being on my feet or up and down, my um, 10-year-old daughter loves to rub my feet for me. Oh. So that pretty much relaxes me, and she knows that I really enjoy it. So she's always volunteering to rub my feet or put lotion on my hands or brush my hair. So that gets me in a coma state almost. <laughs> what a sweet baby. I can imagine you're relaxed. I'm a little jealous. Where do you yeah. live, Carolyn? <laughs> Where do I live? Ah, well, I'll be over. <laughs> oh, I, I live in Jinx. <laughs> okay. I think we'll all be over after yeah. that. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, so also in the packet that I sent you guys, the reason why I asked what do you do for self-care, there is two things that are really helpful. One of the things, you have a list of different things that you can try, different skills, different coping skills, different activities that will actually keep you calm and bring you back to a good place. And then behind it, there should be a plan. So I'm one of those people, I'll go to trainings, I'm like, yes, yeah, I'm going to use that, this sounds amazing. And then life hits the next day, and I may or may not apply what I took in that day prior. So I want you guys to leave here with a plan. If we have a plan and we write it out, I think we could be successful at it. So inside the packet, there is a plan, and it's daily, weekly, monthly. If you were to pick one or two coping skills that you're willing to commit to daily, I think it would be really helpful. And then the next column is pick another two skills that you're willing to commit to to do weekly. And the next one is monthly. I believe if we see and we read and we write, that it's going to stick a little better. And if we commit and have a plan, we're probably going to carry it out. So if you want to just take a moment, I don't know if you guys printed it off, but if not, take a moment at the end of the day and try to create a plan. Because the deal is, we got into this field because we want to help. But if we're slowly pulling away from ourselves and we're draining ourselves, we really don't have anything left to give to our families and our kiddos that we work with. And we want to be our best full self when we're working with those kiddos and, those, and the families that we work with. And we also want to share that with them. If they don't pour into themselves, they can't help anyone around them. And another angle you kind of look at it, when we go home and we're parents or we're spouses, if we allow our jobs to just really just drain us, we don't have anything left to give our home environment either. And so taking care of yourself, I mean, it goes way just deeper than just, you know, the sound it sounds good. It really is healthy for us. I think that's one of the most important skills to pass on to the foster parents as well, not just the children that we're working with, but the foster families that we're working with. And they're basic, so they can pick them up and keep them with them. Um, the bubble idea for the deep breathing, they're super duper cheap. I went to Dollar Tree and got a pack of the, the wedding bubbles for a dollar. And then when you run out of bubbles, you can put a drop of Dawn dish liquid and add some water and shake and you have bubbles all over again. Better bubbles. They are better bubbles. Yeah. So just a couple of skills. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for okay. having me. All right, or do we have any uh, questions or things that we need to discuss before we head on for our days? I'll let you know that Brent Hayes, uh, our liaison with DHS, <clears throat> he took a lot of notes back to DHS from our 401 a couple of weeks ago, 
and he's already moving on some things. For instance, he's working on uh, being able to use some of these webinars as uh, trainings for some of the foster families. They're working on that. They're going to have Tamara do a webinar for foster families based on trauma. A lot of good things in the works. I also want to let you know that we're working on getting CEUs for these calls and these webinars. Um, we've got some technical things to work out and figure out, but we're going to be able to start giving one CEU for every call. So if you did all 12 calls for the, for the year, you'd get 12. Hopefully I can give you some more details about that for April. Any questions, comments? Any other celebrations? Nope. It sounded like a nope. Okay, well, we're going to end early soon today, and I want to say thank you for the work you're doing. Have a great day. Get out and enjoy the sunshine. Thank you. Talk to you next month. Hi, Thank, you. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. You. Thanks. Bye, guys.